another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today we're going to try and do some debugging of Apple assembly language code. And to do that, we're actually going to use a sample program uh, that I found inside the Wizards Toolbox. And this was a collection of AppleSoft ampersand routines published by Roger Wagner Publishing back in 1984. And we'll just take one of these routines and see if we can do some debugging to figure out why it doesn't work in a certain case. Uh, so the code is actually at the back of this book, uh, but you can also find some similar code in Chapter 17 of Assembly Lines, the complete book. And what we're going to demonstrate is passing a string from AppleSoft into assembly language, and then what can happen if you don't specify the string correctly. So now what we're going to do is switch gears over to the Mac, where I'll be using Virtual 2 to actually do the debugging, and I'll show you why in a second. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are over on the Mac, and we're using Virtual 2 for our debugging because it makes life a lot simpler. Um, if you had to debug on the Apple, uh, it's a lot more work because uh, you can't stop the program and examine registers without putting in a lot of extra effort to put in breaks and prints and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so we're going to use Virtual 2. And here's the actual code. So this is the machine language routine from that wizard's toolbox. And what it's doing is reading in a variable from AppleSoft and just uh, putting that string somewhere in the Apple memory. Uh, so just to really quickly go through the routine, um, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, basically that the syntax for this looks like call and then the name or the uh, address, which in this case will be 768. Uh, so it's call 768, comma, and then a string. So quote, hello. Um, so what the assembly language code has to do is basically take that call from AppleSoft and parse out the string and then write it out to memory. So if you look at the code, uh, the first thing we're going to do is swallow the comma right after the uh, address, so the call 768 comma. Um, then we evaluate whether it is indeed a string variable. And if it is, um, we call free string, which is a, a kind of a trick to actually free up uh, memory for the string. And once you're done calling this, the uh, length of the string is actually going to be in the accumulator and the uh, address of the string variable itself is going to be in locations 5e and 5f. And up here you can see that's this index variable. Um, so finally after we're done with that, then we want to transfer the accumulator into the Y register uh, because we're actually going to use uh, some indirect indexed addressing to actually write the AppleSoft string into memory. Um, and then we just enter a loop where we uh, decrement y and then we load the accumulator with the uh, each character of the string in order so that's this indirect indexed um, and then we just store uh, the accumulator at our data location and in this case I've picked a data location of 380 uh, just kind of a nice safe spot at least for short strings um, and then finally at the end of the loop we just compare y with 0 to make sure that um, we uh, haven't reached the end of the string. And if we haven't reached it, then we go back to the top of the loop. And otherwise, we just uh, go to the end of the program. So let's go actually go now and look at the AppleSoft program. And to do that, I'll just get out of Merlin. This is Merlin 8, by the way. Um, and now I'm just going to go to my own disk. And over there, I have a, a, a simple AppleSoft program that I wrote. So here's our code. It's called string read. If I load string read.basic, oops, I can spell it right. BAS. Um, so here's my program, and it's very simple. It's just a few lines of code. We're going to load our assembly language program. We're going to create a string, in this case, test. Um, we'll call our routine at 768, give it the string, and then I'll just print out. Um, whatever's in memory, um, and this is at location 380 uh, through to the end of the string. So if we just run this, um, it should take the string from AppleSoft, pass it to the machine language, copy it over to address 380, and then print it back out. And it all looks like it works great. 
The problem, however, is if you actually change the string into a null string, so just an empty string, then bad things happen, um, and you end up clobbering memory. So I'm not going to actually run it because that's um, I'll have to, to reboot the uh, the Apple here. Um, but now we'll show how to actually debug. So first thing I want to do is just shrink the window a little bit so I can go under View and change it to Medium. Um, and then Virtual 2 has a really nice uh, set of debugging tools. And so if you go under Machine, you can say Show Inspector. And this lets us, uh, first of all, it lets you just inspect any memory. So if you just say Break, um, you can look and see where is the Apple now in its execution. You can scroll through Assembly. You can scroll through memory, you can find things. Um, over here, you can see here's all the registers. Uh, so the accumulator, the X and Y registers. And then in the lower left, there's a stack. Um, so what we want to do is we'll just resume now. Um, we want to actually set a breakpoint. And we want to set a breakpoint at the beginning of our routine. So I'm just going to say new. And I'll give it the address. So it's 300, and that's in hex. And I'll just say OK. All right. And now when I run my program, oh, by the way, I should point out um, in the breakpoint menu, there's a lot of other things you can do. So here's our breakpoint at 300. Um, you can also set watch points for when uh, data changes. And you can also examine I.O. addresses. So you can say um, if someone does a peek or poke to a certain I.O. address, then stop. Um, but we're just going to stick with our breakpoint right now. So if I run my program, it'll go ahead and load it. And then as soon as it hits that call 768, it's going to stop. And you can see it threw us right into the inspector here. And we're at line 300. Um, and what we can do now, let me scroll the memory so we can actually see what's going at 3. Oh, you can actually see over here. Look, there's our, our word test from our previous run of the program. So if we want, we can now just start stepping through the code. So I'm just, I don't need to step into any of these uh, Apple soft routines. So I'm going to step over the first one. If you recall, this is when it was just checking for the comma after the 768. Um, then now we're on line 302. Yep, here we are. So we're on line 303. Um, and this is where it's going to check to make sure that it's a valid variable. We step over that. Uh, we're now on 306. Step again. OK, so now we should have the length of the string in the accumulator. And you can see, sure enough, it has a length of 0. OK, so now we're going to transfer that with TAY into the Y register. Right now, Y happens to have a value of 8. Um, so if I step over, you can see y now becomes 0, um, which is really nice. And now we're getting to the loop. So this is the, the loop where it actually just wrote the characters out uh, from the Applesoft string into memory. And so we're just going to decrement y, and then we're just going to uh, load the accumulator with each character, store it in memory at 380, see if we're done, if we've reached a length of 0. And then if we're not done, we're going to branch back up to the same decrement y. And when we're done, we're just going to do the RTS. And bonus points if you can actually spot the error right now. Because what's going to happen is we're going to decrement Y here. So if I step over, and now all of a sudden Y has become FF. OK. And so the problem is we never put in a check for a zero length string. And so when we go ahead and we load the accumulator, what we're going to do is we're going to go out to that string address location, and we're going to advance 255 positions from that into just garbage memory. We're going to read whatever's there, and we're going to store that um, at 380, comma, y. And so we're actually going to end up storing way off into the text page. Um, so just for fun, I'll let this actually run, and you can see what happens. But basically, the, the point is, using Virtual 2 or any other um, emulator on either the Mac or the PC, um, it makes it much simpler to actually debug your assembly language programs. You can see what's going on in memory. 
um, stop the program at any time, advance it, and it just makes life a lot simpler. If we didn't have this tool, probably what we would end up doing is just printing out the assembly language code and just kind of going through it line by line until we spotted the error. Uh, so kind of very poor man's debugging. So let's go ahead and run this. And if I just hit resume, and you can see sure enough, the screen is all filled with garbage um, and our program didn't work properly. So what I should do now probably is go back into Merlin and just put in a check for zero length strings just as a safety uh, precaution. But that's pretty much all I wanted to show today. So it's just kind of some tips and tricks for how to use the virtual two debugging. Uh, if you have any of your own tips for doing debugging on the uh, Apple, either virtual or the real hardware, uh, please add them to the comments of the video. Thanks for watching.